Mm-hmm. Number 591. Go ahead and read that. 591. Mm-hmm. Apiety, O me. To give away, an example, up, over, back, etc. So to give away or to give back. To give back to her parents? Go ahead, continue. In various <laughs> applications, to deliver again, give again, to repay, repayment, to be made. To repay her parents? Go ahead. To perform, recompense. To perform or recompense her parents? If this woman, what you know, when you go into your husband, you supposed to leave, you leave your parents, right? But what if you lost your husband? You come back home, they like, look, women trying to, they, they, what, they, what it was, was they was trying to see if every widow had to be taken care of. All the sisters in the church who had husbands and they don't have them no more, whether they old or young, or even just the young women who are around here and ain't got parents. That's too many women to be taken care of. What is they doing for the church is what Paul want to know. So Paul said, look, these, these young women, basically the widows he's talking about here is the younger women who can possibly get married again, or they're young and they vibrant, they may still, they may got children. Or they could go home and help take care of their nieces and their nephews. Or they could be at home helping out their parents. That's what Paul's saying here. This is good and acceptable before God because, brothers and sisters, not everybody lived in the community. I got a book here that written up on the history saying, yo, especially in the gent. Now, this ain't necessarily talking Jerusalem. But as they establish these synagogues over the world, historians will tell you, yo, everywhere where the, Jew everywhere where the Jewish Christians live, they always lived in their own communities, no matter what country they lived in. They always had their own community as a service of Christ. They had their own communities. You can't escape it. I know we want to, some of us, but we can't escape it. They had their own communities. And then you had the Gentiles and the people coming in who fellowship. But yet still live their own way. So they're like, look, we ain't going to be taking care of any and every single sister who ain't got no husband. Those younger ones, send them back home and tell them to help. Help their parents. Help their nieces and their nephews grow. Go home and teach the word. Don't just sit around like every woman waiting like, okay, is the church ready to take care of me? This is what he's going to say about the woman who is a widow indeed. And you know he's talking younger women versus older women. Read verse 5. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusteth in God and continue in supplications and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. Now do you see that she that is a widow indeed and desolate trust in God and continue in supplications and prayers night and day? Ain't she like the woman that we read in the beginning? She's the woman who's what? Not married? So she is totally given to God and how she can please God. This is a true widow in the sight of the Most High. Continue. And these things give charge that they may be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, and especially of those of his own house, and he denieth the faith and is worse than an infidel. This scripture is always read to talk, tell brothers in general, get your house in order. But this scripture in general, in context, is talking about Men should be taking care of their sisters and they should be taking care of their family members, the women who may have lost husbands and stuff like that. If these women are holy into the church, then he's saying, yo, the families. It's not even just talking about a man either. Whoever it is, he who don't take care of his and provide for his own house is worse than a non-believer. So when Paul is saying, yo, Timothy, Tell them to take care of those women at their homes. Let them go home and help their parents. This is the context of it, and it's not just the scripture you always want to use when you say, brothers, you ain't getting a job. I mean, the context fits. But still, in context here, why did he bring that out of nowhere? Because those younger widows were to be taken care of and not be a burden on the church so that the older women who really were widows could be taken care of. And it's still with stipulation. Verse 9. Let not a widow be taken into the number under threescore years old, having been the wife of one man. So do you see, wait, hold on. Do you see what he's saying? Don't let the church be put in a position to have to take care of a woman if her family could take care of her. If this woman ain't, no, if this woman is younger than 60, let the families 
Let her be with her family. But the woman who is above 60, go ahead. Well reported of good works if she have brought up children. Uh-huh. If she have lost strangers. Taking care of the stranger. If she have washed the saints' feet. Do you know what that means? She serves the church. Go ahead. If she have relieved the afflicted. She relieved the afflicted herself. Continue. If she have diligently followed every good work. If she have followed every good work. These are the women at the church. When, when the church come together in community, these are the women that, are, that, that everyone should be trying to make sure is taken care of. And these women, it didn't just say any old woman. It said, look, these widows should be older than 60, and these women, they may have had children. They have washed the saints' feet. They have taken care of the afflicted. They have taken care of the strangers and have sought after every good work. So that means what is a woman supposed to be doing even if she old? Some of you sisters listening to me right now might be older than me. Y'all might not have no husband. You might have a husband. But what should you be doing? You should be serving the saints. If you want the benefit of what is supposed to come when the saints are really supposed to come together. Look at what he said for the younger sisters to do. Verse 11. But the younger widows refused. He said refuse the younger ones. Uh-uh. Because these younger girls is in and out of what they want to be. Go ahead. <laughs> for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry. Basically, you, what do that mean? That while they younger widows, that means they ain't got no husband. Mm -hmm. Tech, Paul said earlier, a woman who not married supposed to be married to the Lord, basically, right? Right. But when they start to feel they flesh, brothers and sisters, and if you look up wanton, everything about it is sensual. She want to feel sexual, luxurious, meaning she miss a man. Husband gone. She probably had one. Or she a girl and ain't never had one and she desire a husband. When he's, Basically what he's saying is don't put all this time into taking care of these young women exclusively and then they're going to run off and go get married. They may leave. And now... Basically, they can't help the church no more. That's not saying the church don't help them, but it's not the church's job to take care of them exclusively. Go ahead. Having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. That's right. And with all, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies speaking things which they ought not. Mm -hmm. I would therefore that the younger Women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversity to speak reproachfully. For the adversary to speak reproachfully. Now, brothers and sisters, what he's saying is the younger women are open because these older women are going to be less inclined to the things that they were early in their life. Remember when Sarah and Abraham was told that they was going to have a kid? Right. Didn't Sarah say she laughed? She wasn't laughing because she thought God was impossible. She laughed because she was like, hold on, if I'm going to have a kid, then that means me and my Lord going to have to, we're going to have to get busy. <laughs> she said, I don't deal after the manner of women no more in that way. When you old, you just got to be in love. Women not running around, she probably was done with her menstrual cycle like young women have. She So her body not even going through the stuff like it did when it was young for her to think she's going to have a baby anymore. You understand that? She, the way of women not with me no more? Brothers and sisters, that's why Sarah chuckled, because she was old. So these sisters over 60, that means 65, 70, 80-year-old women, they not thinking about that, even though they still got a mind to think of themselves a certain way. Physically, they just don't have what they had when they was 20 and 30. And he's saying these sisters around here who 20, 30, 40, man, these sisters going to eventually want the comfort and the company of a man. And once they get into dealing with that man, what did Paul say earlier happens? They start to concentrate on the Lord less. That's what he meant by they shall receive damnation because they basically wax wanting against Christ. And now they want to marry a man. He not saying there's anything wrong with it. He said, but this is why we not just going to wholeheartedly give all our revenues to take care of younger women. We are preaching marriage around here for the younger sisters. I'd say that younger women should get married, find themselves husbands again eventually, have children if they don't have them, 
bear, he said, and be, guide the house. 